In the previous video, we have finished implementing the single responsibility principle to our project. I have proposed a challenge of implementing the UI a controller that will control the UI. So let me show you my example of the solution for it. So I have created this UI controller class that controls the game object UI window and the text object. We can toggle UI by setting the window to be visible or not. And I have created a show text function that toggles the UI true and sets the text field text to the text passed to this function. And we have used it in our player script. So now our player simply gets the reference to the UI controller and toggles the UI controller using the toggle UI false when uh, we are moving. And our enemy and friendly NPC has an, a Unity event uh, attached to, to the script. Uh, that we can set similarly the, to what we do with the buttons in the UI. So we can add an event and fill it in with uh, what object should listen to the on speak event. And let me show you the code. So the enemy and the friendly NPC has both the public unity event of type string on speak. And when we call get hit or actually for enemy get hit and for friendly talk, we are calling on speak question mark to see if anybody is listening to this event and if it is we are invoking this text and whoever is listening to this event on speak will get the text from the character so we can uh, write it down in the for example journal or show it on the screen so if we press play it still works the same but we have split the responsibility for the UI controller that I have attached to the canvas object okay great this code will be on GitHub if you want to copy it, but I hope you have developed a similar or better solution for it. Now, let's take a look at open closed principle that we will discuss in this video. Okay, so open closed principle. On Wikipedia it is described as in object oriented programming, the open closed principle states software entities, so classes, modules, functions, etc should be opened for extension but closed for modification let's go to our project and let's discuss what we can do in our project to apply this principle okay the open closed principle tells us that we should write our software in a way that we can add functionality to our software without having to modify the software itself or rather the class for example the module the method now how do we do it well, if we go to our hierarchy, click on our player and see the rigid body. For example, the rigid body does it through this drop-down list. We can change the body type to kinematic, static, dynamic, and the functionality will change. So it will respond differently to the player input or to the physics engine, depending on the body type. Great, so let's see what our code can do. Well, for example, player movement script. We have not predicted that somebody might come to us and say, can we make the character run? Well, for now we can't. But how would we apply open closed principle? And do mind that this is called principle, but in reality this is just a tip that we can use to make our code more maintainable. So how do we use this open closed principle to make our code more reliable and more open for extension instead of modifying it all the time? Well, if we count on that every character in the game will run, we can add a bool flag run, we can refactor this movement speed to be a property or create another method here, so add another method, and inevitably we would have to modify this move player speed, and for example, instead of this move speed directly given here, we would create a method get speed value, and if we have a bool flag is running true, we would change the movement speed or increase it by 2 for example and pass this new value here to this method. So what we would achieve this way we would not modify the move player method since somebody else might be using this method but still would like the functionality. Well we would still have to modify the content of this method to make this move speed into a method that returns a float value for example so this is the trade-off that we need to make if we are introducing new functionality. So do mind that you might experience such situations where you simply didn't know at the start that you will need to have this functionality 
and there would be no good reason to spend time introducing this functionality because maybe you have something else better to do to introduce to your game and you are even not sure if you will need the running functionality for your game. Okay, so now we can see that it isn't always easy to apply the open-close principle to our classes. Sometimes we will have to simply re-architect them and refactor them to uh, comply with it as best as we can and hope for the best, but in some cases we can predict some functionality that will be needed. For example, let's take a look at our player input. Player input relies on our uh, Unity input manager. So I'm going to go to the top menu, edit, project settings, input manager, and we can see that input manager axis horizontal, for example, takes into consideration the keyboard input as well as it can take the joystick input. So it takes into consideration both of those. But what about mobile input? So to do that, we would have to make sure that we can implement a different player input for mobile to create a couple of buttons and get the input from those buttons instead. And we know that our player relies on our player input. So what we are going to do in the next episode, we are going to extract interface from our player input and make sure that our player relies on the interface so that we can implement a different way of getting the input more easily to comply with open closed principle. So see you in the next video.